Yeah, move to a cabin in the woods by yourself. What could possibly go wrong? We made it. Hello. How are you today? Are you good? Good. I'm just sitting in nature, enjoying a nice cup of tea. I'm just getting it start. Don't trust everything you see on TV or YouTube, wherever you're watching this. It's all lies. I used to not love social media. I used to, to fall into the same trap of, oh, I can only show my, my best face. Especially as an actor, they're like, well, this is, this is your marketing for you as an actor. And uh, I'm like, yeah, but what about me as a person? Nobody seemed to care. And then at a certain point, I stopped caring and I didn't take care of myself as a person because I was so hyper consumed with what people who looked at my Instagram and my social medias would think of me that I wasn't real anymore. I lost who I was. So I moved to a cabin in the woods for 30 days by myself to figure out who I am, to reconnect with my soul and spirit, to deal with some mental trauma. Oh man, that's real bright. Sybil entered my life in one of my low points. I've said before, and I'll probably say it again and again, my puppy saved my life. I don't know that I would still be here without her. I owe her everything. So every time she bugs me to go on a walk, every time she just wants to play like she does right now, I drop everything I'm doing. I'm going to get it. I'm gonna get it, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it. She's my best friend. She's my fur daughter. Why are you looking so cute right now? So cute. Huh. You know you mean a lot to me. You mean so much to me. So I keep saying alone, but I have quite possibly the biggest safety blanket in the world right here, huh? No, I'm not going to turn you into a blanket. Last night, I heard a pack of coyotes real close. I had to be right at the road, running up the road. I've never heard them up here before. I know we have a mountain lion. There's a mountain lion that lives real, real close. But now we have coyotes too. And Sybil and I used to go on a lot of night hikes up here and I don't know that we're gonna be doing as much of that anymore. Not out of fear of anything happening to us, but I'd be real sad if I had to kill coyotes or a mountain lion because we felt like going on a night hike. Remember how I said there's a there's a mountain lion up here somewhere. Still 
fur on this. There's still hooves. This is very recent. That's something we don't talk about enough. Not here, it's it's very apparent. My dad's dying. And it um it affected me a lot. Death's touch woke me up to my own life, made me very aware of how I want to spend it, where I want to spend it, what I want to be doing. How I want to go out. And I moved down here because I can't go back. I tried getting my old job back. I tried moving back to Los Angeles. And I immediately felt like I was back in the life I wanted to kill myself in. And I don't know exactly what's next. I know where it isn't next. You know, I had made a home. I had made a home for myself in LA over the last 13 years and it feels weird to have to walk away from my home again. But walking away from my first home, my parents' house, was one of the best feelings I ever had. Today's video is brought to you by nature. Nature, we'd all be dead without it. The joys of laying in an open nature space, doing absolutely nothing, doing nothing purposefully. Here comes my puppy. Here comes my puppy. Where were you, huh? Where were you? What trouble were you getting into? Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Told you I'd catch him. Told you I'd catch him. I've never had wildlife just not give a fuck about me as much as they don't give a fuck about me here. I love it. I love it. That's a lot of animal. Sybil, leave it. Hey!
Mist. It's okay. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Don't give up. If you don't succeed the first... I've had that problem. Like, if I'm not perfect at something, the first time I've ever done it, I get so mad at myself. Don't be a perfectionist. It gets you nowhere. Nowhere. That's my message to myself. I need to let go of being a perfectionist for sure. I just read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. Two big lessons I got out of it. One, there's no shortage of very talented poor people in this world. And two, McDonald's didn't get to where they were, are, by, by making the best burger. And if you're a perfectionist like me, we're so worried about making the best burger. But here's the thing. I would rather make a real good burger than be McDonald's. I don't know if that analogy still holds up. Come here, baby. Over here. Thank you. Got him all that time. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made was wishing I was anybody other than who I am. I was in chess club in high school. I was on the rock climbing team. I was in literary club. I skateboarded. I'm weird. And I'm so okay with it. You know, my whole life I didn't realize how weird I was until I got older. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm a fucking weirdo. I'm not any of those social norms. And I wanted to be. For the longest time, I wanted to just be the popular kid, the cool kid. Tyler Durden from Fight Club. Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know? And I was always wishing I was them rather than just being happy. I was me. I am me. A weirdo who lives in the woods, hangs out with his dog, and is getting pretty darn good with a bow and arrow, if I do say so myself. Alright, this might be a bad idea, because uh, I'm probably going to lose an arrow, but I just want to shoot it and see how far it'll go. Pretty far. So I feel like I finally got it down to a system. I feel like I finally found my rhythm here. I wake up. Another day, another beautiful day. Meditate. Journal. Go on a walk with my pup. Work. Read. Go on another walk with my pup. We're on yet another hike. Light a fire. Go to bed. Usually whenever I find a rhythm somewhere, I get bored, and then I leave. So we'll see how long I'm here now. <laughs> Sometimes I look at people that can just... They're perfectly content working their one job for 30, 40 years. Or they're just hyper-consumed with one thing, the obsessors. And I'm a sampler. If I go to a restaurant and they have a sampler, I'm getting the sampler. I want to try it all.
Does that mean this is my first go around in this world? I've done so much. I've been very fortunate. I've been very lucky that I've gotten to travel as much as I have. Gotten to work as many different jobs as I have. Gotten to build things, do things. Every time I go through my, my camera roll or like old cameras and I look back on my life, I'm lucky. I'm really lucky. I'm thankful that I've gotten to do all of this. The fact that I've gotten to take time off of life, basically, because I have a remote job and I can move here and focus on me. So many people don't get to do that. So many people are stuck in a life I don't think humans are supposed to be living. And it's sad. I feel for them. Younger me had no idea how to handle my emotions, how to move my energy around when it wasn't right. And that's it's the coolest thing that I've learned in the last two years, is being able to move and shift energy, release, disconnect myself from my emotion. I should be teaching this stuff in school. I've never used Algebra 2 trig in any aspect of my life. I've never used calculus. I've never used chemistry. Our entire education.
education system needs an overhaul. I like these woods two to three times every single day and I think it's easy to you know once you've seen it you're like oh I've seen it all so we started playing this game by we I mean me we started playing this game where I pick out ten things that I haven't mentioned before that I am grateful exist on this hike and they can be anything it can be anything. It can be a flower that I haven't seen before, or a certain pine cone. It can be the uniqueness of a tree. And you can be like, Justin, how unique can a pine tree be in an entire forest of trees? Well, I don't know, human. So I'm going to take you on my walk today. We're over a month in already. We've been doing this a lot, so there's less and less things that I haven't mentioned before. But I, I like it. it makes me look for more beauty in the world, actively searching for it. I don't know what day I'm on. I think it's, wait, it's July 17th, 18th maybe. So I've been here for two and a half months now. Two and a half months. It was originally gonna be 30 days and I just kept coming back. I flew up to San Francisco to shoot a movie and I thought after that I'd probably mosey on. I just kept coming back. I didn't want to leave. There's a peacefulness to this place that is unmatched. I'm going back to school. I realized uh, the thing I was always best at in life was learning. And there's a lot that I didn't learn that I want to learn. Uh, I'm torn between conservation biology and becoming a wildlife veterinarian. Um, luckily, a lot of the prereqs are the same. I have a business management degree, which helps me out like none. So I'm starting from scratch here. And it feels great. It feels great. I've spent far too long being indecisive of not knowing exactly where that next step is going to take me and then being afraid to take a step and it being the wrong one. And I'm not afraid anymore. Like Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. You hear me? I'm not afraid anymore! That booms in this valley. The furnace definitely heard it. that saying that says smile and the world smiles back. I 
I've been smiling a lot lately. Everything smiles back when you do. It's so true. I came here to find peace, and I found it. I came here to change, and I did. I came here to find myself. And I have. It's definitely bittersweet leaving here. This place was my Walden. I kind of felt like the last few years I've hit pause on the video game of life. finally ready to play again. I don't know what that means. I don't know where it's going to take me. But I trust. I trust the universe. I trust myself. And I trust Sybil. We're going to be just fine. Huh. One more walk. Okay, one last one. Huh.